follow your heart, have some analysis, uh, learn from your elders, any experiences they can give you, of what to try and what not to try, you know, uh, listen. Um, be respectful with, to the community and the people who are there. Um, remember, you don't know everything, you know, and other people can, can teach you some. Um, and, that, and to trust yourselves. If something feels right, it's probably right. Um, if it's wrong, it doesn't feel right, and you probably don't put your whole heart into it. So to kind of follow your heart, um, know that uh, we have so many areas where we need help. We need help in health, we need help in immigrant rights, we need help in um, education. I mean, every level, you look at any part of society, and we need areas of culture, health, uh, education, econ economics, jobs, you know. Um, uh, I'm kind of, you know, I've been involved with the Zapatistas for years, and I learned a lot of things uh, from them, and one, I'm going to give you a couple um, for you to think about as future or continuing activists and people. Is, uh, there's one, it's, um, let me see, how does it go? Exponer, no imponer. Exponer, no imponer. Right? So lay it out to the people. Don't impose it on them, but lay it out there. Let them take a look at it, and maybe they'll decide to do that. Um, uh, there's another one, mandar obedeciendo. It's another Zapatista principle. It's uh, governed by obeying. And so if you're going to be an activist, maybe you want to do what the people need. You know, you can lay it out there and let them choose it, you know, because they'll, they'll get there. You don't have to impose it and to um, uh, take the steps when the people are ready to move forward. You can, you know, it'll, it'll happen. Um, those are two of the many that they have, but those are the ones that I really like that, um, that kind of lead me still, you know, and you go, yeah, well, you're old. Well, you know what, we're still doing this, you know. We led the immigrant rights marches a couple of years ago. Um, I had to have made it 100 banners. You know, all those banners we were carrying, okay, those, I made those, you know, and I helped make them and cut them and paint them and anything, you know, it's sort of like whatever has to be done, you do it. You don't have to be the, the chingona, you know, the one in the front, all that. You don't have to do that. You can be the one in the back doing some work or you can, or if you have to, step forward and be the leader. You know, if it's required, then you just step up. You know, it's just, it's up to you, you know, to find a really good role. I hated when we were in the movement, and we were, uh, I remember one of the other women told me, come on, it's, we have to go cook. And I was like, Shit, I don't know how to cook. Are you kidding? You don't want me to cook. I know I don't know how to cook. I'll go do something else, but I can't cook. I'll go protest. I'll go do something else. I, and I'll write, I'll do leaflets. I'll do anything, but don't ask me to cook because you don't want to eat what I make. You know, it's not good. But it was like we had to fit in these certain roles. And I, I hope that you wouldn't fall into that. You know, we fought for a long time, so things would be different for you, for you as women in, in general in society, but also for women within the movement, that you wouldn't have to take a back seat, that you could step forward, that you could put out your ideas, and they would be accepted. They wouldn't have to, you wouldn't have to convince a guy to present the same idea so it could be accepted like it was for us. It was awful, you know, and so I'd say... Uh, Stand up and continue, and, and it lasts the rest of your life. It's not like a commitment for till you get out of school. It's like if it touches your heart, you're going to be doing it for the rest of your life.